All right, what's good, Derpy? What's up? All right. So I'm going to let this go through. Hit up the viewers. Let everybody hit up the chat. As the room fills up, you know. Let me do something. Dizzo, what's up, bro? Yo, my boy Dizzo, he's in the chat. He got this for me, among other shirts. So these are going to be my podcasting shirts. This one right here, kick off with the Aban suit. Shout out to my brother Dizzo. Okay, look who is finally go live, right? <laughs> my man, everybody been waiting. I know, right? It's been a while. I got my coffee. Um, Sorry. Um, it's been a minute, right? It's been a couple of weeks since I went live. Um, I think I think I think the last live podcast was about um, like two weeks before December, a little bit before uh, Christmas Eve, and then after that, haven't provided. Yeah, no doubt. This I loved it. Appreciate it, brother. And then I loved the um. The PlayStation lights, so I'm gonna hook it up because you you're giving me ideas for the background and stuff like that. This will really love it, man. So I had to wear this, gotta wear it. So shout out to my boy Dizzle, to my brother, my baby bro. Uh, hold on, there's one thing I want to do before we move on. Where you at? Here we go. Let me pause this right here. All right. Oh, my man. <laughs> Derby's like three weeks, two days, 13 hours, 47 minutes, and 56 seconds. You know what would be crazy? If that if you were actually telling the truth, I'd be like, oh, snap. Yo, so we'll get the room up. It'll probably be a slow day um, as I try to uh, get the podcast running to kick off the year. I know everybody was in a rush. Um, everybody rushed in to start their New Year's and kick it off. Um, so was I in a rush to start it? In, like mentally, like yeah, I, I I couldn't wait um to start going live again, right? Um, but it was a couple of things. There's certain things I had to finish up at work. Work was really, you know, to kick off the year at work was really busy. Um, so like in the Marine Corps, or whatever, uh, we we call it um um our Ramadan our Ramadan season because we get a lot of holidays off during the winter season. I mean, it kicks off like the moment, the moment November comes in, we have Veterans Day, we have our birthday in the Marine Corps, so we get time off of that, then Thanksgiving, you know, and when we get time off, it's like four days off, which is something you rarely see like in the civilian sector, right? Or, you know, you rarely see that many days off for the holidays, but we get like four days off for Veterans Day, um, four days off for, for Thanksgiving, four days off for Christmas, four days off for New Year's. And then on top of that, our own personal vacations in between. I mean, it's it's literally Marine Corps Ramadan. Uh, so we get a lot of time off. But the blowback, and assuming you're not deploying, but the blowback behind that is when you get back in January, oh my God, there's so much stuff you got to catch up to because you pretty much ignored it. And then you have to start all over with training and it's just crazy, right? So I, I want to make sure I get out of that because that's my priority, right? Um, as far as my career goal. But I, but in between, I just couldn't wait um, to to get back on the mic. But at the same time, there was is a little bit of slow news, so I was a little patient. And then of course the crew, um, they're busy with the stuff they got to do and stuff like that. Um, but it's good to be behind the mic again uh, and ready to talk to you guys. Okay, so just like any other time, if you could do me a favor, um, retweet this out, post on your favorite social media. Um, and we're about to head up and um, in a few minutes uh, and get these topics. But for uh, the uh, I hope everybody had a good time. I hope you guys had a, a great holiday season, given the scenario that we're in, uh, you know, with COVID, whatever. But I hope you had a, a, a safe holiday season and that you were able to enjoy it the best you can and stuff. Uh, but there's a couple of things I want to talk about. As you can see, uh, we're going to talk about a little bit. Of the PlayStation 5 uh, upcoming games uh, from the CES. I haven't seen the, uh, the Consumer Electronics Show in total yet. Uh, so, But I'm catching a little bit of news. But the most interesting part is um, a glimpse of what's upcoming for PlayStation 5. So I'm going to give you my thoughts on that. Give you my thoughts on CD Projekt Red. 
about to get that hurt locker from uh, their own government in Poland. Talk a little about like that. Uh, what else? Also, this debacle with uh, Sony TVs and stuff. So that's a little bit weird. So we're going to talk about that. And then also a little bit of channel update. Um, and just give you a couple of things uh, on that. So just to give you a shout out, we got Derby the Lame, you know, showing up first. Appreciate it. Magnific magnificent Black. Of course, my brother Dizzo. You know, ASAF, what's up? You know, uh, Hero Killing Kira was good. Uh, Azazel Black, what's up? Um, going down the line. And Call Me Jay was good. Adrian, you know, today, what's up? Um, and we're doing. So I would imagine today's going to be a slow day because I know, I know the big game is on. Uh, the Alabama, Ohio. So that's a big thing. I'm not into college football like that because I'm from New York. I don't think a lot of people in the northern east coast are into college football only because our teams suck maybe penn state or those teams whatever but you never hear of you know the new york teams in the in uh in college football they're just not most most of the best players in the nation don't go to the northeastern team because it's cold whatever so yeah so i never really grew up around college football. college basketball is a different story syracuse all the way but you know what I'm saying. But we're gonna kick it off. I wanna I wanna start with something. Get the get the channel back trending again because it has been a little bit. It has been a couple of weeks. Um, you know. So we need to get it in there. So let, let's get it on. So let, let's start with PlayStation Five, right? Let's get it. Let's get it. Oh, shout out to Savage. Um, but let's get it started going. Um, and again, hit the like button, please. Uh, so we could get the channel trending again. Uh, we could get the content pushing over. Um, and stuff like that. Brian Carter, what's up? What's good? Thank you for showing up. I hope everybody out here had a great holiday. But thank you for showing up. So, real quick. So, uh, Consumer Electronics Show is up in here. Um, and there was a slide featuring a, a bunch of upcoming games. So, just to run down. So, we got a date for Returnal. Uh, March 19th this year. So really looking forward to that. Um, the game looks great. Uh, it's a house marquee game. Um, they're, they're stepping up into production. Like uh, normally they would uh, create, you know, like the, the uh, um, indie type games. Like the, you know, real cheap. Cheap as in low costing, you know, top down, things like that. But they're really um, stepping up production. This this looks more like a double A production title. So I'm glad to see them grow and tackle on more aggressive titles. And it's coming out this March. Pragmata is now has a, a year for 2023, so it's gonna be a minute. Uh, game called Solar Ash June this year. Uh, Ken a Bridge of Spirits also March, but no specific date. So I'm kind of cautious when they don't give a actual day because there's potential. They like they give themselves that wiggle room in case it needs to be delayed a month or so for whatever reason. Uh, that Sony quality, right? Stray and Ghostwire Tokyo is out in October this year. Little Devil Inside this July. Project Athea. So January 2022. Now this is a Square Enix game. So you can. I would say there's a 50-50 chance it'll get delayed, right? Um, but apparently this game has a, a two-year exclusivity. Or it's a timed exclusive on PlayStation for two years. That's crazy. I'm like, man, then what, like two years exclusive to a PlayStation? Like, you know, wow, that's pretty crazy. And then you got Hitman 3 this January, but with no date, but supposedly this month. And then Horizon Forbidden West 2021. Um, what I do notice is it doesn't say God of War anymore. Or and I ain't going to say anymore, but remember, God of War did get announced for 2021, and it's not there. So it's a little bit concerning. Um, that they didn't list God of War among that. I mean, it still could be a 2021 game. I don't know. Um, people showing up. You know, we got Brian. I already said Brian Carter was good. Um, Karel Anchor was good. You know, Juani Tudor was up. Lionel B. Yo, I subscribe to your channel, Lionel B. That's good. Yo, Deep 1985. Pepe. Mamma bicho. Vete para carajo, cabrón. <laughs> oh shit uh, so how's your night going hey i'm out of work finally so and it's monday right start of the week so how else it could go um 
We still haven't seen gameplay of God of War. Yeah, yeah, we haven't even seen no gameplay of God of War. I mean, what we saw was just a thing, so it might be troubling. Um, but anyway, it's a pretty good, decent list. If if Sony could keep up and stay on target with the targeted dates, that's not a bad list, you know. And that's just maybe it's not even all encompassing. It could be more games coming out. Um, but we'll see. That's that's not a bad first year list. Um, if they're able to really do that. Uh, you seem like the type of dude who's not easily talked into some spontaneous stuff. No, really? Yeah, I think, yeah. I'm, yeah, I think my brain waves worked as more focused. I guess, maybe, I guess that's how it is. <laughs> but yeah, that's a great, um, that's a good, decent list, whatever. That's a great first year trial. Um, but like I said, the fact that I didn't see God of War, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, who knows? Uh, so this happened over the last two weeks. So I want to bring it up now. I'll just add this in. Is um, David Jaffe saying that potentially God of War is a cross-gen game, right? And I've seen some people um, have issues with that. Oh, snap. Von T with the super chat. What's going on? Says... They only had dates and years for games that was in CS video. God of War wasn't in CS video. Okay. Interesting. All right. Thank you for that update. Appreciate it. So I didn't see the CS video. I'm looking at the list. I'm trying to catch up to that. But Vonti, hey, appreciate that info. So Vonti saying that the list is in particular to what was shown in CS. And that's why God of War is not on there. So it's probably not a representation of maybe what Sony's doing everything. Maybe this is just the one segment they're willing to show for CS. Okay, that's a possibility. That's a good note. Thank you, thank you, Vanti. Thank you for the super chat. But just as important, even more important, thank you for the information. Really appreciate that. Um, even more people trying to sign it up. Man overboard, Rome Rush. What's going on, my brother? Yo, Rome, how you doing, brother? I hope everything yeah, I hope you're recovering well. All right. We got Vegan, what's up? Um appreciate it. And C B three was good. Uh, but Final Fantasy, bro, Final Fantasy 16 is dropping this year, and it's part of the PlayStation exclusive deal. Is it dropping? Is is that confirmed? Final Fantasy 16 this year? Because if it is, imagine adding Final Fantasy 16, Horizon, and God of War. Just those three right out the gate. Man, that that's a killer year in of itself. That that's bananas. Good to hear, Rome Rush. I'm glad you're feeling much better. Triple J J J. What's up? Triple J, Triple J. <laughs> What's up, P-Rock? Happy New Year. Um, but yeah, that's... I mean, think about it. A, a combination. God of War. Horizon sequel. Final Fantasy 16. And then you sprinkle in Kena, you know, Returnal, and these other 21, 2021 titles. That's a, that's a pretty good... That's a pretty good... That's a pretty good... That's a pretty good... Um, that's a pretty good... That's a great year. And it, and, and, and it's, it's really great because it's a first year type thing. So that would be incredible for, 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 for gaming. Like, yeah, and Ratchet. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. How can I forget about that? Shame on me. Shame on me. I'll do push-ups. I owe. I owe for forgetting Ratchet. And then, okay, I'm going to add this to... I'm not big on this, but I know a lot of you are big. Gran Turismo 7. I know a lot of you guys are racist are big on that. So I'm going to respect the fact that you guys like it. If you know me, you know I could give two... I give two whatevers about racing games. But I understand it is an important franchise. Is is Sony's biggest franchise. It's been there since day one with the PlayStation brand. So I recognize the importance of Gran Turismo. All right. And if they're able to deliver the rumors and hypes and the conversations about it, you know, like 4K 120, all that weird stuff, then and then and then I, then as definitely not just as the game itself, but as a technical showpiece, that's um uh would be an incredible thing. Way better than the PS4's first year. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Rox, Roxas 180. Uh, welcome aboard. Um, Knuckles, what's up? Thank you for mentioning Rat Chat. But uh, Roxas, is, am I pronouncing it right? Or is it Rojas? Uh, hey, forgive me. Y'all killing me. Y all, y all, like I said, my, 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 my chat members always put my reading skills to the test. But, um... Definitely better than PS4's first year. Like, as most of you know, if you, if you follow for me a while, I did not buy the PlayStation 4 till 2015 because they really, the library was not that impressive at all, right? Um, but man, you add Ratchet to that as well, God of War. Whew. 
Yeah, and it's also better than PS3's first year because PS3's first year wasn't that great at all. PS3 had a rough launch for a while, too. Yeah, that's crazy. Electron Bandit was good. Oh, uh, yeah. PS PS5's first year is looking pretty. If if it falls through, just just the perception and how it looks is looking is looking real clean. It's looking really nice. You know what I'm saying? And if and if these games launch when they're supposed to, based on the list, like damn, this is is if you're a gamer, yo, I I don't know how you just can't hop on this right here. Uh, same here, Rock 2015. Yeah, that's when I got it. Um. Uh, I think God of War will be pushed. Let's talk about God of War real quick, right? So David Jaffe mentioned that most likely it's a cross-gen game. Um, I know some people may have issues with that. On the on the on the on the person like me, right? You know, and if you followed it over the last year, I'm all about the exclusives, okay? And then no, it's not because I'm I'm comparing it to one brand or another. Or I'm trying to keep games from other gamers. In fact, I don't believe in that term. I think that's a bullshit term. I think that's a bullshit mentality. I think anyone who thinks that anybody who supports exclusives is gatekeeping games for gamers, I think those people are fanboys who care more about hardware than games. That's just that's my view, and no one's changing that. Now, why is that my view? It's simple. Because if you care about the games, then the hardware is irrelevant. You'll get the hardware to play the games. When you when you prioritize the games, there is no hardware that you worried about. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it is what it is. If there's a games you want to play, then you just walk in the store and you just buy the hardware. Okay, All right now, I ain't gonna use. I ain't, for this case, I'm not gonna say excuse. I'll say point number one. Well, what if you can't afford it? Hey, I, I will never. Uh, insult the guy or make fun of people because um of their money situation you know whatever this is especially now during covid right i'm not i'm not i would never put another man or woman down for that situation but in my opinion if money is that tight that you can't afford another gaming console which these gaming consoles are not that expensive they're not then maybe you spend less time arguing on twitter and more focus on what you gotta do to earn more money Okay, I'm not going to knock you for not having or the ability. I'm not going to knock you on that. You know what I'm saying? Because it happens. Bad things happen. Life is rough. Believe me, you know, um, I will always uh, I would not I would never insult a person for the struggle in life. You know what I'm saying? You got to do what you got to do. Right. But if you put all your energy every day on arguing about gaming and but at the same time, you're saying you don't have no money, then you, your priority is wrong. Okay, your, your priorities is all screwed up. Put more effort in doing what you're going to need to do to get to the place that you're at. And then, you know, because again, the, it's not like I'm, we're asking you to buy a $2,000 console. So these things are not expensive. They're not that expensive. Okay, they might be expensive right now because you're in a bad place or not in the best place that you have. But put yourself in a better place, right? So in my opinion, if you're about the games, you're just going to get the hardware and play the games, right? So I don't believe in this term of gatekeeping. There is no gatekeeping. Gatekeeping to me is if you try to get the console and people are stopping you from buying the console. No one's doing that. No one's stopping you from getting what you want, right? Now, maybe you live in a part of the world where the console is not available and the only platform that you have is PC, let's say. Then, okay, I get that. You know, maybe there is no PlayStation and yeah, or you can't get the game. So, you know, some something weird like that, right? But I think that's like a rare occurrence, whatever. But for the most part, if you're about the games, you you know, and I only say that because that's how I am. If I really want to play a game and it's only available on this platform, I don't see it as a heartache that I get that hardware and I play those games. That's just because really it's more about just playing the game than it is about owning the hardware. Um, that's just how I see it, right? Ice Queen, what's going on, girl? What's up? How's everybody doing? Uh, uh, crypto, cryptopsy, what up? Okay. Uh, thank you everybody. Uh, hey, as you're watching this, please hit the like button. I would truly appreciate it. So now with that said, um, God of War. Potentially cross-gen. I think there's a high potential chance that this will also be a PS4 game, right? And the reason why is this. The game came out in 2018. So if it comes out in 2021, that is pretty fast, right? Came out in three years, right? So when you think about it, it's not like they built the game ground up 
that fast for a PS5, right? That's number one. Number two, the game is huge, right? And rumor has it the game sold 18 million. It's, it's probably the most successful it was ever done in the history of the franchise. It is. That one game took the franchise to new heights. So majority of the fans of the game on the PlayStation 4, right? Now, of course, the argument could be made, well, the PlayStation 4 fans need to buy the console then if they want to play the new one. I understand that point. The only problem is you're not going to get 18 million gamers over the next year. It's just not. It's just not possible. You're not going to get sales that fast. You know, you know what I mean? It's just that the, the pace of what you need is not going to be that fast. So the majority of gamers are in there um, on the PlayStation 4. The game is now huge and it's bigger. Um, so to meet that critical success is going to need the PlayStation 4 fan base. And I think because it's cross-gen, is probably the main reason why we might get in 2021. I think if Sony transitioned it over to just PlayStation 5 only, sure, it would be phenomenal because you're focusing on PlayStation 5 hardware, but it wouldn't be a 2021 game. You will probably be looking at a 2023 game, 2024. It will be a while, right? Or you can look at it as... You get it. You get the 2021 cross-gen version, right? Which I think is going to be phenomenal. I think. I think. Uh... Hold on, girl. I got you. Did it? Do it? All right. So, what you call it? Um. There you go. So you get you get your twenty damn sorry sorry about that but you get your twenty twenty one back you get your game twenty twenty one right I think it's gonna be great because look at Spider Man Miles Morales it was still overall great sure we wonder how much more Sony could have done right because Insomniac did a phenomenal job with Miles Morales on a PS five especially like with the with the recent um well it's not so recent anymore but with the sixty frames with ray tracing that's crazy right. So imagine built from the ground up, how much better the graphics could it be? Um, what other game designs? You know, you 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 just wonder what limited factors PlayStation Four had, right? If they would have just strictly focused on on Miles Morales, um, we'll most likely see that with the next Spider Man game. It's true potential with the PlayStation Five. So the same question we're gonna have with God of War, right? What true potential the next God of War have if it wasn't tied to PS Four? But I think it'll still be overall great. And I think it will, you know, wet our whistle, you know, for the next version. So we get our God of War, you know, sequel, Ragnarok. And then the next one, you know, which which will which satisfies our craving, just like what Miles Morales did. It satisfies our craving. And then boom, eventually, maybe two, three years after that one, we get an actual built from the ground of God of War because I'm pretty sure it's part of development like I'm pretty sure the 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 built from the ground of God of War is being done somehow whether it's just the engine redesign something is 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 it's, it's, it's getting ready it's being prepped right and who knows the God of War Ragnarok might be you know the closing chapter of the Norse mythology right and then the next God of War could be something you know um from the Chinese mythology or maybe Egyptian mythology, which is the new chapter. So the built from the ground up um, PlayStation version, it's a whole new chapter. You know, imagine Egyptian mythology or, or, or Chinese mythology, which I think is what they're going to do. And I think that would be fantastic. I think that would be very exciting. You know, uh, put in the chat, which one would you want to see? Chinese mythology or Egyptian mythology? Uh, some people say, nah, it's going to be a trilogy. Well, if it's a trilogy, let's say it's a trilogy, why call it Ragnarok now? What would the third one be then? If if, if the second one's called Ragnarok, which is the end, because that's really what Ragnarok is, then what's the third one? What would it be? Because Ragnarok is the end. It's, 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 the, it's the, you know, Valhalla? They ain't going to call it, ooh, God forbid, right? They're not going to call it that, right? So um, let's think of it, because they're already calling it Ragnarok. Right? And... If it is a trilogy, right? 
Kratos versus oh, you, Ryan. <sighs> Kratos versus Jesus. You gonna pay for that one? Um. <laughs> uh, uh, now, if it is a trilogy, that's just gonna take longer to start. If if they are planning um, a next chapter, it's just take long to uh, to start the new one. Um, and the one thing about God of War, though, you can't linger on the same topic for too long. I think if you look at the mythology one, they stuck with God of War mythology because, you know, he's Spartan and it's all about mythology, but they overused the hell out of it. And, it, and, and, and that's why God of War Ascension didn't do too well. All right. Um, so I think by going a different mythology... And of course, the gameplay was phenomenal. It sparked new interest and made it even more interesting. There's potential. They'll just do two and then just move on to new mythology just so that way it won't be stale. Or, you know what I'm saying? Just just, just knock it out. Do the first one. Do the second one. Boom. And bam. Go to the next one. Go to a new mythology. Do the first one. Do the second one. Let's say if it was Egyptian. Boom. Now we'll go to Chinese mythology. You know what I'm saying? Um... Uh, is it really called God of War Ragnarok? I thought the trailer just said Ragnarok is coming. Yeah, maybe. I think that's why people are assuming because of that. Um, it's going to be interesting the direction that they go. Uh, but we'll see. But I think that's going to be a great thing. Uh, Egypt will be flashy. It's going to be interesting. And uh, Chinese will be unique. I'm not very familiar with Chinese mythology at all. Um... Not really much on Egyptian mythology, really. Um, I was a big fan of, of Greek mythology. So when God of War obviously came out, I absolutely loved it. Because I was always into Greek mythology. Uh, but I don't know much. I mean, I know, you know, Anubis, Horus, you know, from the very little things from TV shows, whatever. But I never actually sat down and read, read books on it. You know, Greek mythology, I read books on that stuff. Uh, don't know anything about Chinese mythology at all. Um, would be pretty interesting because I think, you know, Asian culture, Chinese culture really talks about dragons and stuff like that. So they're very big on that. Um, would imagine, love to see the combat and stuff like that. So, you know, Kratos versus Ra. Be interesting. There's a, there's a lot of interesting things to go around. Be really interesting the direction they go. And I think it's going to be fun and exciting with the future of Kratos, right? So, but as far as what is cross gen... I think if it's a 2021 game, there's a good chance that it is cross-gen. But the good part is we're going to get another uh, God of War, at least one more. So we'll have two God of Wars in the gen. Um, how about Mayan? That's a possibility. Mayan culture, Mayan gods. Yeah, I mean, there's, 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 some, there's some interesting stuff. Interesting, interesting direction going in. But yeah, anyway, so... so Great list of games shown at CES. Thanks to Von T for clearing something up. Truly appreciate that information. Um, we got 76 viewers. Hit the like button, please. Um, we're going to go on to my next topic with Cyberpunk. So, CD Projekt Red, right? So, from what I read, the Polish government. So, now, so CD Projekt Red is based in Poland. And a while back, uh, the Polish government... Um, Gave grants, loans, whatever you want to call it, uh, to CD Projekt Red to help build the studios uh, and give them the funding they need to produce big blockbuster games. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's one of the few developers in Poland that is huge, and the government supported them, right? So it's a huge thing, um, money invested from the government, which means it comes from the taxes of the people. So the people's money is literally in the company. Well, after this blowback of Cyberpunk 2077, they, woof. So now the Polish government is, is threatening. And maybe threatening is a harsh word, but they're, they're saying that depending on the outcome of these updates, if, if CD Projekt Red does not provide the updates to put, you know, on the game up to whatever standard, um, they're going to tax or remove or take 10%. Of the pay from CD Projekt Red. And they're going to take it back. And put it back into the government. 10%. You know. That could be a lot of money. Especially supposedly the game sold like 13 million. You know at 60 bucks a pop. Right. 
that's a lot of money. And then that's just the game. Never mind if there was any merch or any other form of revenue for the game. So 10% out of all that revenue. And then never mind the refunds. Because there was a lot of refunds digitally also and stuff like that. A lot of gamers were not happy. So they refunded them. So you're talking potentially a lot of money. You know, at a certain point, you know, the game sold 13 million. But it's clear it's not generating the revenue of 13 million. Because of the refunds and now the potential of the post government taking 10%. Like yowzes, right? That's a yowza. Um, but I'm sorry to say they deserve it. And I think any developer that pulled the stunt they did, and, and, and this isn't a fanboy. If Sony did the same thing, absolutely deserve what's coming to them. Any developer that did what CD Projekt Red did deserve it. And I'm not talking about the bugs. It's not about the bugs. Okay? A lot of people are using that as the argument. The argument isn't the bugs. Sure, you got gamers disappointed in the bugs, but that's not the case because we played plenty of games with bugs. Right? Bethesda. They literally, we literally named Bethesda Bug Tesla. They release nothing but buggy games. And we still play them and they still sell a lot. Right? A lot of crazy bugs in their games. Elder Scrolls, it, it, Elder Scrolls Fallout, my God. Some buggy crazy games. Bug Tesla, that's who they are. So why aren't they getting the same slack as CD Projekt Red? Because Bug Tesla was honest about it. And what I mean by that is they didn't try to hide it. You know, they always sent out advanced review copies of every version and they let the chips where they fall. You know, they even sent out the review copy. I remember when Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas came out, you know, it was on the PlayStation 3. They gave PlayStation 3 review copies and that those were the absolute worst versions of the games running at 20 something frames crashing. It was bad. Those versions were trash, you know, but they still reviewed it. So if you bought the PS3 version of these games, you should have known. Now, if you didn't bother to check the reviews, if you didn't bother to look at Metacritic, you just went blind and bought the games, then that's on you. You just didn't do the research. Now, granted, you could say, no, it's not on me. You need to release a quality game. Agreed. But this is this is reality. All right? Nobody creates the perfect product. Anytime you buy something, you should do your research. Whether it's a phone, a car... You know, whatever, you know, you do your research, especially electronic devices, especially electronic devices. When it's something electronic, TVs, radios, anything, headphones, you want to do the research. You want to see user reviews and stuff like that and see what people are going through because especially electronics is all finicky, right? Over, right? So with gaming, you definitely want to do the reviews and see it, right? So at least Bethesda, they were honest and they always have review copies, right? But CD Projekt Red trying to hide it. They did not provide any, any review copies for their console version of games. No Xbox One or, or PlayStation version of the games. None. Only the PC, right? Which is a good one, right? And obviously, majority of the PC version reviewers, they have high-end PC. So when they played it, I think uh, while the game was out for a little while, it was like in the 90s. Now it dropped down to the mid-80s, like 87 or something like that. But 87 is still a great score. But when people saw it was like 91 or whatever, they're like, man, this game is really good. The hype is real. The hype of cyberpunk that people have been pushing for over a year is real. And people think, well, you know, the console version might not be that far off. Clearly, it's not going to be as good as PC version, right? Whatever, because of the hardware. So if PC is 91, hey, console might be 85, 84. That's what people were doing. People made an assumption of not that far off. So it's going to be an 80-something rated game on console. Cool, I'm going to buy it. And they bought it, and as you can see, the actual rating version is like in the 50s, because it's miserable, right? Not nowhere near as good as the PC, nowhere near representative of the PC version, it's just straight in abysmal game, in terms of the quality, really bad. And some people don't like buying games, some people don't mind the bugs, but a lot of gamers do, and, and if they would have known... That this game is a 55 whatever rated game. They would have not have bought it. Now, do I think there's still people that would have bought it? Of course. I think people would have ignored Metacritic. They would have not cared. And they would have still bought it. Right? And it is what it is. The You know, 
They take it for what it is. But at least it's a choice. But for the people that wouldn't avoid it and be like, you know what? I'm not touching this game until I see the updates. Until I see people who actually play the versions telling me that the version is good. It works. Or maybe I'll just wait for the next gen version. Those people never had the opportunity to make those decisions. Because there was no review. So all they could go by is an assumption. An assumption based on the PC version. Number one, right? But number two, the trust that they have in CD Projekt Red being the, the consumer-friendly developer. The developer that's always um, with the gamer's interest in mind. That's why the game was so successful. And I think CD Projekt Red violated that trust. Um, and, and a lot of gamers got pissed off. If they were just honest and provided a review copy, sure, it would still be a 55 but at least anybody who bought the game, you bought it on your own accord. You chose to buy it as is. It's not to get zero. And the people that don't want to buy it, at least they have the choice not to buy it because they are well informed. But it was the lack of being well informed that caused this. That was the problem. Uh, and now they're paying for it. For, for that level of disease. And they deserve it. Any, any developer deserves it. I don't care if you're Capcom, from software, Sony. You get what you deserve if you go this route. You know, be honest. If you made a bad, if you made a glitchy game and you're gonna release it anyway, release the review copies and let and let the people uh, make the decision on their own. It just it just is what it is. You know, um, and I don't feel sorry for them. Why why would I feel sorry for a company when they try to screw over the consumer just because they want to make money? You know, and they use their clout that they built, well deserved, but they abused it. I'm not gonna feel sorry for you, you know, because if you know, luckily for me, um, what stopped me from buying this game from the get go was I just waited for the next gen version. You know, what I'm saying, yeah, I'm gonna go get it the PS5 version. I'm gonna just wait it out because I want the PS5 version, right? Um, but then when I saw the lack of reviews and i'm thinking wait a minute this game is is being sold you could buy it right now and not one ps4 or xbox one review and like 40 something pc reviews i knew something was up i'm like wait a minute this is this is weird like yo this is crazy not one review is said to be determined and the game's been out in the street for like a week I'm like, yo, something's wrong. Or like a day. I'm like, yo. And then that's when the, the news started coming out. I'm like, so now, when the game does get its next gen patch, whatever, or whatever they call it, update, whatever. But it's it's a PS5 version, you know, Xbox Series X version, whatever. I'm still not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy that game until it's like $20 with all the updates and all the DLC pack. Kind of like what they did with The Witcher 3 Definitive Edition. It has everything for 20 bucks. To me, that's all it's worth. It's worth 20 bucks. Simply because of what CD Projekt Red did. I'm not going to give you the full $60, $70 for this game. Not after what I did. You can wait. And when your bargain bin. And believe me, I could wait two, three years for that. Because there's going to be plenty of other games. I don't need to play a CD Projekt Red right now. I could definitely wait on that one. And that's just me. That's just crazy. You know? And that's it. Um, 100 viewers we reach. Hey, truly appreciate you showing up. If you don't mind it. And hit the like button. And uh, spread this out to your favorite social media. I would truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for showing off on the first live stream of the year. Um, so the next topic. Sony TV. The 900H. Rumor has it that it's not going to get a VRR. So that means the TV is not VR compatible. Um, Dark Cloud. He works for Sony. He's saying it will be. People going on my timeline. Bringing that up. To me. And. Here's my thing. Why. Why people brought that up to me. Like what does that have to do with PlayStation. Like I don't. This this is. This is the same. Thing that happened in 2014. When um, Sony shut down their PC division. So they stopped making PC desktops and laptops. That's it. They were done because they just wasn't doing good. You know, everybody else was buying Toshiba, Dell, HP, whatever, whatever. So because they shut down the PC division, it, it, they said, oh, PlayStation's not going to have, they can't afford AAA games. 
You know, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, what the hell is this nonsense? What does that have to do with a separate division? And now we're it's doing it again. Like, yo, this is deja vu, man. This is just weird. What does Sony TV division, which has absolutely nothing to do with the PlayStation division, have to do with that? You know, because the reality is this. VR is not a necessary component for TV unless you're trying to market your TV as a gaming TV. If you're trying to market your TV or monitor or whatever as a gaming product for the gaming audience, then yes, you need VR. You need VR because it's, a, it's, an, it's, it's pretty much an essential capability for gaming. But if you're just marketing your TV as a... As an entertainment for shows, whatever, just general purpose, right? Especially for casuals. Most casuals don't even know about VR, for one. And most people that buy the TV don't play games on it, right? The ones that do, they're going to look specifically for TVs that gives them the gaming capabilities, right? Like me, I don't I don't have... My gaming TV for the PS5 is a Samsung Q80T, right? And I specifically researched... For what I want. And I looked at the 900H. I looked at the Sony 900H. I looked at Vizio. I looked at. The two TVs that I came down to. Was the LG CX. And the Samsung Q80T. Right. Now the LG CX. Is possibly the best gaming TV out on the market. Absolutely. Right. So why didn't I buy that one? Number one. Because of burning. Now I will say this. For most people. Majority of the people. And I think everybody's saying that the LG OLEDs most likely won't experience burning. It's a rare occurrence now. Okay? So why am I concerned about it? Well, for me, it's because of how I'm going to use the TV. The TV that I'm playing with, the Q80T right now, I don't watch TV on it. If I watch TV, it is not in this room. I don't watch TV in this room at all. That TV so far, I have only used it for gaming. And if it's not for gaming... I go to the living room and watch TV. Because usually I watch TV with my wife or whatever. Or if even if I'm by myself, I watch TV in the living room because it's a much bigger TV. You know, the, the one in my gaming room here is 55 inch. The TV I got in the living room is 75 inch 4K. Right? So I watch it there. And I have um, a, a sound system in the living room too. So me watching TV in the living room is much more enjoyable. Because it's a better setup, bigger TV. Um, it's just set up nicer. So this TV is strictly gaming, right? So that's number one. So, you know, how they say when you wear OLED with LG, whatever, as long as you're watching things different and have different images going through, you'll be fine. Well, I won't have different images because I absolutely won't have the TV images. So that's one. Number two, I have, I do have a bad habit. I do have a bad habit that when I pause a game, I walk away and I walk away for a long time. So you're talking maybe 10, 15 minutes at a time where it's just on the pause menu, static. I will do that. I have done that. There's times I left it for a half hour. You know? Um, like, I don't turn off the TV. I come back after a half hour and I continue playing. I've done that plenty of times. It's just a bad... Maybe yeah, it's a bad habit, but that's just me. I do that. I leave the TV just static for hours... Ooh, excuse me. For hours upon hours end. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think that's very good for an LG TV. I don't think most people do that with... You know, with TV in general, but I do have a bad habit of just leaving the TV on a static screen for a long time. So the combination of not me watching any type of TV show movie on it and doing that with the way I play games, I would be the idiot or the unlucky asshole, the unlucky dipshit where my TV, me, is screwed up. I would be that guy where my shit got burning and and and, and, and I'm not going to go through that. So the Samsung q TV is fine with me. But how this goes back with the Sony PlayStation, I one, I don't know why anyone will go, if you're looking for a gaming product, I don't know how y'all chose the 900H. I, I just don't know. Now, I know some people say cheaper prices, like $900, you know, or something like that. Well, I got the q t for $1,000, $1,060 to be exact. So it's a little bit, it's $100 more than 900H at the time when I bought it. So maybe it's timing of when you can buy this TV. But the difference is the Q80, the Samsung has everything out the box. It has VR, ALNM. There's no updates needed. It does everything, you know. So I didn't need an update. So I did not like the idea of 
the PlayStation needing an update as a future update for the VR. I mean, not the PlayStation, the TV. And I'm thinking, you know, why would I choose the TV that still doesn't have any of the features, but it's coming soon when this TV already has everything. And, and the Samsung quality has been known. And another thing, the latency is better. And what I mean, the lower latency. The Q80 has a lower latency compared to the Sony 900H. So even as gaming, when it comes to lower latency, it's better. So I'm like, lower latency, got all the features, you know, that you need for gaming, right? Uh, the one thing, the, like I said, the only other better TV is the C, is the, the OLED, the CX. It does all that stuff, and it does G-Sync for the CX. The Samsung, sadly, I wish it did G-Sync, but it doesn't do G-Sync. You know, it only has VR. Um, I wish I had G-Sync because that would have been great when I get into PC gaming this year. Um, but overall, 908. So overall, the, 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 the TVs have nothing to do with the PlayStation. It's a weird, it's a, it's a tactic that didn't work in 2014 with the whole PC thing. It's a tactic that doesn't matter. Now, if you bought the Sony 900H, um, I really hope it does come on an update, especially if you in, if you intently bought it for gaming. I really hope it does have the update because that really sucks. Um, you know, me personally, if you just bought the 100 H, if you could return it, return it. Get the Samsung q 80 I I don't think you'll miss out. You know, or get the LG CX. You know, and pay a little bit more. I think you'll be much happier with those two TVs. I think they're much better, have lower latency, especially if you want it as a gaming thing. Um, but I hope it has the update. I hope you guys really get the update and um, stuff like that. Uh, but why was this coming at me? These 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 fanboys, these Xbox fanboys come at me with the weirdest stuff. Like, haha, Sony doesn't have this with the TV. And I'm like, I don't give a damn. Okay. You should have not bought the TV then. Um... I think there's a confusion of me being a PlayStation fan, Sony fan. It's not the same. Sony fan and PlayStation fan is not the same. I'm a PlayStation fan. I prefer PlayStation platform and many things. And, and I don't even like everything with PlayStation either, right? Because like, as you know, I don't like Gran Turismo. I don't like Sony handhelds. I don't think they did a good job with their handhelds with Vita. That's just my opinion. So it's not even that. So it's not even everything PlayStation, right? Um... It's the majority of things, you know, PlayStation. Primary, the consoles and the games, right? Um, but I don't really care about anything else, Sony. I don't really care about their TVs. I don't care about their radios. I don't care about their speakers. My headset is Beats. You know, I prefer that. Uh, my little mini pods is AirPods from Apple. And I, 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 my iPhone is from Apple. Um, my laptops are from Dell. My speakers are Samsung. Hell, my washing machines that back at home in North Carolina is from Samsung. I think the only legitimate products I have that are Sony is the PlayStation 4, the VR, the games, the PlayStation 5. And then the, I do have one TV, which is a Bravia, that I bought like two years ago. But that was only because it was a great deal. But I never really gamed it or I never really cared to game on it. Um, but I don't have a lot of Sony stuff. I don't really care. I don't... When I look for electronic stuff, I don't think, oh, let me look at Sony first. I really don't. In fact, to be honest, that's probably the last place I look. Because I think the other people, I think other companies do it better. I think LG and Samsung make better TVs and speakers than Sony and stuff like that. Um, that's really, I don't care about the phones. I stick with iPhone. Um, you know, I think the only thing that I'm looking forward to that's, that's specifically Sony but again, it's more because it's PlayStation is the headset for the PS5. But that's because it's PlayStation specific. So I'm more I'm more into PlayStation stuff than Sony. So if Sony sucks at something, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but I'm not going to simply hype everything Sony just because they make the PlayStation. No, I hype PlayStation because it's PlayStation. And it earns its right. Um, because it makes great stuff. Um... It is what it is. That's that's just a weird thing for me. Um, hit the like button. Um, but old tactic. So those of you that are new or who's who's just jumped around. Um, oh snap! What kind of rig you're gonna get? So right now I'm just gonna wait until all these cards are available. But I'm gonna build an Nvidia rig. Um, it's gonna be Nvidia based. I'm not gonna mess with AMD right now. Uh, a lot of the PC gamers. 
recommend just go with NVIDIA and Intel. Um, and I think mostly, and maybe some of you can talk about it. A lot of them saying that AMD, the biggest issue with AMD is the drivers. And that AMD does a terrible job of having the drivers needed to make to get the best out of your range. Is that true? Let's see what the chat says. So for you PC gamers out there, be honest. NVIDIA versus AMD. Who does a better job of providing drivers? Driver support. So that way, the games, you know what I'm saying? You get the most out of these games. You know? And then also, they're telling me that NVIDIA, um, AMD does not have an answer for NVIDIA's DLSS. AMD CPU and NVIDIA GPU. AMD is a go-to. They support PCIe 4 and so, and so on. NVIDIA does a way better job. If you don't want an infection in that tooth. Oh, I don't know what the tooth thing. So AMD CPU. So now what I heard with the AMD is the CPU is good for multi tasking, like multi, you know, multitasking, but game specific Intel's better to get the most performance out of your games. Is that true? Can anybody confirm that statement? That Intel does a much better job specifically for the perform for game performance. But AMD is good for game performance, but even better for like multitasking. So like if you want it like for podcasting or like you're gonna do stream setups and have all these things open, the end the, the Ryzen CPU is just killing it. Like it, it like it's is that true? That the Ryzen CPU is great when it comes to stuff like that. No longer true. Okay, so it's 50-50 with Intel and AMD when it comes to game performance. What about, you know, multitasking? Because I guess the way Ryzen, multi-threads and all that does a better job than Intel, or is that not true? See, everybody keeps telling me about just the thing about AMD is that their drivers suck. Not suck, but they just don't do as good of a job as NVIDIA. NVIDIA does a much better job with driver support. You know. Ryzen for productivity all day. So, yeah. So, for, for productivity. Ryzen or Intel? Everybody just type Ryzen or Intel for productivity. AMD gives more cores, Intel gives more core performance. So for productivity, uh, it's best to make the own opinion. I learned that the hard way is best to invest in both AMD, Intel. It's best it's it's best to invest in both AMD, Intel, and Nvidia and make your Yeah, but I'm not gonna buy all of that. Hell nah. I'm gonna start out with one build and work my way from there. Um so everybody so far saying rising for productivity. Productivity rising if you don't get any issues. When you're talking Intel versus AMD in gaming, you are seeing around 10 FPS or less difference. Not a big difference, okay? All right. So gaming, not too far off, but productivity, it seems like everybody likes the Ryzen for productivity. So I'll probably go with Ryzen CPU then. And NVIDIA GPU. Because, um, um, all right, so you guys gave me a good... You, you guys gave me a good... Um, window or something and the reason why i'm gonna say this so i'm gonna go with nvidia i always was already planning nvidia gpu so i'm definitely gonna go with the nvidia gpu but i'm gonna do the ryzen cpu for this main reason so the pc game is gonna be my secondary platform right because again it's all about the games right and playstation 5 is not gonna get all the games there's a lot of games it's not gonna get right so i need another platform to have access to these games and pc is that perfect platform they're gonna have a lot of content that's not available on PS5 it has its own exclusive. So I'm going to have an amazing time on it, right? And it's going to be exclusive focus. That might be, or there might be a few multi-plats that I might prefer to play on PC, um, give or take, depending how it is. Or I might double dip, depending how it goes. But I need a gaming PC um, as my secondary platform. Xbox is no longer an option. It never, it, it wasn't an option, but... Later on in the show, uh, as I continue, I'm a, we're going to talk about that. And that's where the final topic, channel update, 
um, it comes through. But um, so PC is definitely something. But another thing with the PC is I want to provide better content. I think I think now it's at the point where the growth of my channel is more about um, the presentation rather than the conversation, right? So I think the conversation is good, but the conversation is never going to change, right? I'm always going to provide a conversation based on true facts and, and, and have good opinions, the podcast. But I think to really step up and give that nice, good um, template of uh, presentation, uh, better editing and videos, or not even better editing, just editing videos in, per uh, in period, I need the better hardware, right? Um, I need the better hardware uh for productivity so I can improve the look of the streams and stuff like that. And you just need, you know, obviously this laptop doesn't cut it. It just pays the bills um, in terms of me just being able to interact with you guys. But I, I want to do better. I want to grow and it's time for grow. Um, been doing this channel for four to that's what 2016. So it's about to be five years. Um, and of course work and stuff like that. But I think now it's to step my game up. So I definitely need a PC for that. The PC is really going to, um, take my channel um, to new heights. Uh, so because productivity is important. Yeah, it's more comfortable than on a dedicated PC. Yeah. So I think since productivity is an important part of this process, you know, to get you the guys the content, to get the edited videos, I'm going to go with Ryzen. So I'm definitely going to get a great Ryzen CPU. Um... NVIDIA GPU. I'm going to go for like the 3070. I'm not going to go with like maybe the 3080. I'll probably get that. I'm not going to go 3090. 3070, 3080. Because for PC, all I'm really concerned about is like 1440p ultra settings. I'm not concerned about 4K um, for that. Um, like I say, you know, you guys know I'm not a big, you know, graphics guy. But I think ultra settings at 1440p, 60 frames, that pays the bills for me. Um... I'm more than happy with that, you know, and I enjoy the games. Well, you guys know I've been playing on the PS4 for such a long time. So you guys know I will play a game and stuff like that. Um, but definitely going full tower, going full, big, full tower, all that stuff. And definitely going to gonna do that. Um, so, okay, 3070, 1440p. 3080 for anything higher. Now, again, this is going to be a little while before that because I'm not going to stress out. With these, whatchamacallit, um, not being able to find a GPU. Uh, are you building it yourself? Yes. So I will definitely build it myself. I, it's going straight scratch. Uh, my brother-in-law, Dizzo, he got me a huge case. He's going to ship it out to me with a power supply. And I'm going to do everything from scratch. Everything. It's going to be built from the ground up. Um, I'm going to go all in on that one. Okay? I'm going to go all in. Child and error. I'm going to enjoy it. Um, uh, you know, it's going to be fun. Um, and I think I think you'll get a better. I think I'll get a better understanding going. You know, component by component, right? Um, I will buy the 3080 if I were you. The 3090 isn't a good bang for the buck deal. 3080 has the memory almost as fast as 3090 without paying as much. I'll I'll consider. I'll look at it both. The way okay. The reason why I'm not so concerned about. Going hard now because it's my first build, so I'm more concerned about um, the proper build, putting it together, experiencing the kinks, the issues, the bugs. It's gonna happen, so I'm more concerned about going through those trials and tribulations or stuff like that, right? Um, I'm not out there ready on my first build expecting the very best performance. Everything's good. Oh my god, 4K, everything. No, I'm I'm, I'm taking it slow. I want a good build and a good balance. 1440p, 60 frame gamings, high to ultra high settings. Uh, podcast is my most important thing. Uh, productivity as well on the laptop. And I'll go from there. As I'm more comfortable and I'm getting the stuff I want, I'm going to upgrade later on. So I don't need to go out now. Um, because I think two years after that, I'm going to be looking for the next GPU with a... Uh, with, uh, uh, much better performance and since it's only going to be the gpu i'm willing to invest more so like my second or third gpu i'm definitely gonna get a higher end card and you know they're gonna release higher end cards you best believe they're just not gonna it's not gonna be the 3080 or 3090 for the next three four years that's not gonna happen 
they're going to make better cars next year and then another better car next year. So I'll get that. Um, or you can wait for RDNA 3. I don't think I'm going to mess with AMD. Um, I think I must just stick with NVIDIA. I like what I seen with DLSS. So I'm going to just do my thing with that. Uh, uh, I'm definitely going to hit everybody up. Uh, let's see. You can DM. You can DM on Twitter for good tips if you want. Having a faster memory in your GPU means it's not going to be what it's going to hold you back on both games. Having faster memory on your GPU means it's not going to be what's going to hold you back. Um, so is there a big memory difference between the 3070 and 3080? Like that huge from a productivity standpoint. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I can understand maybe from high-end gaming. I could see that. Um, because from what I heard... Uh, I, uh, a 3070 is a little bit better than a 2080 Ti at a much cheaper cost, right? Because it's 499 a 3070, right? So 3070 at 499 and it'll probably be cheaper by the time I go for it. Well, maybe not. Uh, you know, but something that's better than a 2080 Ti, I think that's pretty good for a starter build. Um, and like I said, this is it's probably going to hold me over... For two years, uh, it's faster on a 3080 and it also has 10 gigs rather than 8 gigs. So the 3080 has 10 gigs versus 8 gigs. 3070 is better than a 2080 Ti, yes. Um, so the 3080, 10 gigs, 3070, 8 gigs. Hmm. Interesting, interesting combo. Interesting combo. Um, on that, the biggest bottleneck with having a gig is resolution, textures, and such, which is why I said 36. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. So 1440p. That's 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 my. I'm cool with that. I'm not I'm not worried about native 4K. Um, so 3060 Ti. I'll look into that, but I'm cool with the 3070 and 1440p. Like I said, that's my target resolution. 1440p 60. I'm not worried about 4K on a PC. Um, because like I said, the PlayStation 5 would be my main console. Um, I think 1440p with like what ultra high 1440p ultra. So that's a question for Jay. So 3070 1440p ultra 60 is that doable or is that a little bit or am I encroaching the upper limits of the 3070? Because resolution isn't the only thing you need, GPU memory, but also the quality of the textures, etc. So I'm saying like for ultra settings, 1440p ultra on a 3070. Yes, 3070 look up benchmarks. Okay, so now I'm cool with that. As long as I can get ultra. Now, nah, if you guys are saying even ultra's pushing it at 1440p, then... um, Oh yeah, that I'm going to tell you what, I'm definitely putting 32 gigs for system RAM. I'm not messing with... That's one thing I know. I'm a... When it comes to RAM, I'm a I'm a RAM whore. You gotta have the RAM. You know? As long as it's 1440p ultra, I'm good. At 60, I'm good. I know some gamers are like into 90 frames, 100 frames. I mean, if it goes above 60, I'm fine with that. But at least if I could get 1440p ultra 60, I'm happy. That's that's my target goal. Um but if it's but if the 3070 eh, has a little issues with that. Then you got to let me know because then I will go with a 3080 at that point. You know, I don't want I don't want a car that struggles at 1440p Ultra. Um, My man, Blaze 4K. What up, my guy? Sony, baby. Thank you for the super chat. Yo, so I, I'm going to say this. So, you know what? My man, Blaze, is is uh, is a good for the segue. So let me segue into to the next topic, channel update. Um, And my man, Blaze, um. Great segue. So what do you baby? Um so number one, channel update. I gotta go back to some of the things I used to do that I, I, I strayed away from, which is getting more guests on the podcast. I strayed away from that, namely because of what happened in Germany. And what I mean by what happened, not necessarily what happened in Germany, is me going to Germany. So by living in Germany over the last two years, as you know, the hours is crazy, right? 
So for me to have a guest in a podcast, you know, I will have to have it according to their time, you know, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, things like that, which means I will have to be up at 2, 3 in the morning. I couldn't do it. I did it a few times on a weekday, and I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Because I will have the podcast like at 2, 3 in the morning, and then I have to be up at 5 to work. Oh, yo, that shit was bananas. I couldn't do it. I did that like twice. I'm like, nah, I'm done, right? So then the second idea was, okay, I'll do it on weekends. Nope, because I'm in Europe. You think I want a podcast on a Saturday and I'm in Europe? I'm in Germany taking trips to Italy. Well, some of you who've been following me, um, especially on Twitter, I was all over. Me and my wife, we were all over Italy. I mean, all over Europe. Absolutely loved it. Absolutely have fun. So I, I couldn't waste the opportunity of living in Europe for two years and, and using up Saturdays for podcasting. It's just, you know, that's like the Black Bond Challenge. I was all about the Black Bond Challenge, you know, all about the Black Bond Challenge, you know, experiencing life and enjoying life. And it was just a dream living in Europe and experiencing it. And, and, and that's where my channel started. I didn't get the content and push out the content over the last two years that I normally did. Which was getting tragic because it just I just enjoy life in Europe. But now that I'm back in the States, it's gonna get back to that. And the reason why I brought up Blaze, because I gotta get Blaze. I gotta get the Sony Ray out here. I gotta get him on the podcast. I gotta get more people back on his guests. I used to get a lot of Xbox dudes. I, you know, I used to get Kids Move, Ran Outdoor. You know, I used to get everybody. And cause because my channel is all about the opinions. I never held back. I got some guests that was rowdy. If you follow my channel for a while, you've seen back in the past, I had some rowdy stuff on this one. Woo! Some of you might remember some of the crazy stuff that happened. Um, but shout out to Blaze. I got to get them on the back. I got to get people on there. I got to get characters. I got to get people on here to talk about their opinions on the products they enjoy, they prefer, and just get real conversation out there. So that's one channel update um, that I'm going to, that I want to provide. It's going to go back to inviting people, inviting guests. You know, and so that way we have the different perspectives and stuff like that, right? So that's, that's number one. Number two, of course, let me let me show you the graphic. Let me let me show you the graphic, and uh, and this might trigger some people, but I gotta do it because it is what it is. You ready? So check this out. I'm a, I'm gonna let y'all, you know, just in case the feed is slow and you need to catch up, I'm gonna let y'all look at that picture for a little bit. Right. I'm gonna let it soak in. Just let it soak in for a little bit. We're just gonna let it soak in. Now, now, listen. This is not to talk shit in council war. There is, I, I am doing this for a reason. So bear with me right now. If right now you're like, oh, this is Twitter Porter Rock. He's gonna come with the bullshit like he does on Twitter. No, this is not Twitter Porter Rock. Right. Twitter Porter Rock, that's that's a personality I do. And, and it's because of the Twitter people they created that persona. It's not my fault. Right? It's not my fault. I am the way I am on Twitter. It's not. It really isn't. Because I was serious on Twitter when I first started, you know, with the with the podcasting. I tried to be serious. Y'all created the monster that I am on Twitter. Here, because you know, behind the mic on streams, you know, it's chill. But on Twitter, you created the beast. It's, 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 yeah, it's, 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 it's dudes who don't know how to read They don't know how to add They don't know how to do math You bring up a point and they bring up an argument That has nothing to do with the point It's all this crazy shit that I was like You know what, F this trash I'm gonna go ham And I'm gonna just go crazy on Twitter it's, You know, y'all created that animal Y'all created the, 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 the Mr. Hyde I'm Dr. Jekyll here But the Mr. Hyde, y'all Twitter did that You know Twitter created that personality because I couldn't take it. It was impossible to be a a, a rational uh 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 how how can I put it like my man like like Two Face like Harvey Two Face said in Dark Knight we were decent men in an indecent time. Y'all created the Two Face. Y'all created me. Well, not you specifically, the chat, but you know who those dudes on Twitter they created the Harvey Two Face. They wanted me to be a decent man in an indecent world. So no, I was like, nah, I'm not I'm not gonna be the serious guy and take all this abuse. Screw this. Y'all want y'all want the cage fighting and put glue on our hands and, and glass and go kickboxer? Fine. 
I just retaliated. And then when I do it better than everybody else, I look like the toxic bad guy. You know what I'm saying? Dudes went insane on Twitter. So I'm like, cool. This is what you want? Fine. I'm going to do it. And then I look like the bad guy. I ended up looking like, oh, Puerto Rock is toxic. He's causing all this shit. I caused all this shit? I was just, just, I was just a dude who was just want to spread facts. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, this might be it because, you know, here's proof. Oh, no, no, no. Here's proof. And then you all lash out at me and I'm like, all right, fuck it. If we're going to go Thunderdome, let's go Thunderdome. And now that I'm the chairman winning this shit, people blaming me, making me look like the bad guy. I'm so, and they started. Yo, this shit is crazy. Shit is crazy. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so let me show you a couple of things with this. Yo, it's crazy. It's bananas. Bananas how this shit. I get blamed for shit for something other people started. Other people start shit and I get the thing. So look at that. Digest this. We're going to stay on this for a little bit, right? And then look at that. And then look at this one. So we all see that, right? So I'm going to give you a little history on that. So what that we're showing is somebody on uh, Reset Era was able to compile a list of various games, right? It's the end of the gen. So they took the compiled the list of multiplats between two platforms, PlayStation, Xbox One, and PS4. And they compared the, 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 the amount of people, not the amount of people, but how many, the percentages were within the group of people beating the game, right? So for example, and this is the little reason why I go ham on Twitter, because even something as simple as percentages, right? The whole point of percentage comparison. Something like if you 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 had to know this stuff in order to get a high school diploma. If you got a high school diploma, if you got a GED, good enough diploma, right? You had to know, you had to take a math exam and know about percentages. You have to. It's a requirement to get a diploma. How are people screwing this up on Twitter? Even that got screwed up. I'm like, yo, y'all can't read. You don't know math. Why am I talking? So this is all part of the conversation channel update. So anyway, the conversation is just simply within the demographic of the ecosystem, the percentage of people that would beat the game. Just beat the game. Not complete it, not get 100, not get a platinum, not get every single thing. It's just simply beat the game. So when I saw this, I was like, yo, that's crazy. Because some of these percentages are just like completely way off, right? Just like way off, right? I was like, man, the PlayStation gamers are really beating the games at a huge rate compared to Xbox gamers, right? So I'm thinking, okay, we got some data. Let's push this out. Boy, for what was that? One, again, most people don't know what the hell a percentage or what it is, right? The first, the first damage control. Oh, it's because PlayStation got more people. That's why the percentage is higher. And I'm like, that's not how it works, numb nuts. It doesn't work that way. More people does not mean higher percentages. If anything, it means less percentages. I even explained it to them. Like, for example, one platform, you got a million people, right? Another platform, you got 10 million people, right? Oh, no, I say use 2 million because I didn't even go with 10 million because that, that might really screw it up, right? So I told them, the platform with a million people, every 100K equals 10% of the population. So to get 10%, you need 100K, right? If you get 200K in a population of a million, that's 20%. Now, if you go to the population of 2 million percent, 100K is not 10%, it's 5%. If you get 200K, that's 10%. So that means in order to match percentage-wise between... Both populations, the two million population needs more people just to get the same percentage as the other one. People cannot understand that the more people you have, the percentage actually dropped per population. They didn't get it. And I'm like, how? I, I learned this in seventh grade. Maybe not even. I think it was fifth grade. Percentages is not, is not, is not a hard concept. And people did not understand that, right? It wasn't brute numbers. I'm not talking about 3 million gamers over 4 million games. It's just whoever played the game within that population, how many within the population beat it. That's it. It doesn't matter what the overall number is, right? Obviously, since we're talking two consoles, 
we're talking about a big population, right? So it's it's good enough. They couldn't get that, right? One guy even brought, oh, that's not. In fact, it's worse on PlayStation because PlayStation has 100 million. Xbox has 50 million. So when you think about the percentages, it's actually higher on Xbox. And I'm thinking, what the hell is this guy talking about? I'm like, homie, you cannot include the population of people that did not buy the game. 100 million people didn't buy these games. You can only include the, present, the, the percentages of the population that actually played it. The rest of the people is not factored. So, like, what are you, like, how do you have your high school diplomas? You guys, there's no way you got a GED. There's just, there's just no way you got a diploma. I, I, it's just impossible. These dudes do not have a diploma. Like, it just blows my mind. Like, how are these guys messing up a simple factor, right? I was like, oh, my God. Like, that, that, right there. The last draw, and this goes into the channel update. Hit the like button, please. Right? The last draw for my channel update, that was the last draw for me. And I'm going to tell you why it was the last draw for me. And then, and then I'm going to explain to you how my conversation on Twitter is going to change. And my channel, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain how. Besides them not knowing percentages, I think the one thing that made me be like, you know what? This is actually a waste of time. Is the damage control. Because I thought, I honestly, I honestly thought with the Xbox community, they had one thing. I honestly thought they would have at least one thing. One thing. Just one thing. And that's pride as a gamer that plays and beat the games. I thought, honestly, they had that. Because I can't see you being a gamer and at least not have the pride that you begin. Not platinum, not get a thousand score, but just that you play a good game, you go in there and you beat it, and you be like, man, I beat this game. Like, yo, I, I, that's why I beat a lot of games, right? I may not platinum a lot of games, but I beat a lot of games, right? Because I'm a gamer, and you know? And if it's a great game, you're just going to stick to it and you're going to beat it, right? Especially ones that are challenging, like Dark Souls. I love playing those games because when you beat it, oh, man, it's so it's satisfying that you beat it. Right? You conquered it. You play the role. You got invested in this character. You know? And that you beat the game based on this world. Right? So I thought at the very least, that's one thing we all had in common. I honestly thought that was what we all had in common at a minimum. Right? We have our differences between hardware specs and performance and the type of game, single player, multiplayer, one and done. You know, all this weird stuff. But I think regardless of the type of game, Regardless of your standard of, oh no, I, I need 120 frames, you know, 60 is unplayable. Fine, 60 is unplayable. S you know, 64K is unplayable. It's got to be 4K, 289 frames per second. Fine, okay? Oh, this controller sucks. I need the Elite controller. Oh, I need a scuff controller. Oh, I need, you know, inverted controllers. Oh, I play left-handed. I play right-handed. Oh, my guy, I play with one eye open. I play holding a control like this. I play holding a control like that. I play holding control like this. Whatever. However you play your games, I thought there was one thing gamers had in common, no matter why, and that's beating games. Because that's ultimately what you're trying to achieve, right? Beating games. Beating the games, right? I thought that was the one thing. So when I showed these stats, every single Xbox gamer damage controlled it. Every single one. At least on my timeline. Every single one. None of them were disappointed on how low of a percentage or how it got thrashed by PlayStation in terms of beating games. None of them came up and say, yo, this is crazy, dog. How, how are PlayStation gamers at a higher percentage beating us out when we're supposedly the hardcore gamers? This is some bullshit. Like, none of them came with that attitude. As much as they talk about that PlayStation or the casual gamers, right? None of them came out. And, and call themselves out or call their own community out. Like, yo, if we're going to be talking about being a gamer, if we're going to talk about specs, we need to beat these games because this is none of them. They all damage control them. All of them. They all damage control them. They all came out and blamed Game Pass. To which that's not a compliment. Oh, it's because of Game Pass. Well, if you look at the list, a lot of the games aren't even on Game Pass. So that's a stupid counter. And why would you say that? Because in other words, what you're telling me is people who play on Game Pass don't really care to beat the games. They just go in, play a little bit, and they just move on. Like, what the hell is that? 
the, 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 what are we doing, right? So when I saw nothing but damage control across the board, I'm thinking this, and, and, and follow with me. Oh, before I even follow him, this is another thing. This is another thing that, that really, when I caught this, okay? So you see this one right here? Let me, let me, let me adjust this. I'm going to zoom in on this, okay? This right here. I want you to really focus on this. Look at this. Look at this trash. Hellblade. Look at that. Do you see that Hellblade? Do you see that trash? Only 50, less than 16%. Let's say it bounded up. 16% of the Xbox gamers that play Hellblade beat it. While 42% on the PlayStation beat it. Look how huge that difference is. Now keep in mind. These are the dudes that's been hyping the acquisition of Ninja Theory forever. Forever. How are you going to hype a developer when you don't care about the game? Let 16%. 16%. Beat Hellblade. And it's not a hard game by by any means. It is not a hard game. It's a great game. But not a hard game at all. But y'all want to hype. But these this community wants to hype the purchase of Bethesda. I mean, not Bethesda. Of Ninja Theory. For what? When most likely you're not going to play the game. You're not going to beat the game. PlayStation 42%. That's a lot higher than what I thought. And I don't even care about the overall sales or the total amount of people. Just whoever did play it, whoever gave the game a chance on both PlayStation and on the Xbox ecosystem, the PlayStation side, the people who gave the game a chance, 42% beat it. They, they're cool. They got it. They beat it, regardless of how many people played it. On the Xbox side, out of all the people that gave it a chance, 16%. But yet, that's the side that's jumping up and joy doing cartwheels for the purchase of Ninja Theory. For what? You guys don't like Ninja Theory, right? So seeing all that nonsense, seeing all that nonsense, I came to the conclusion, and this is where my conversation, the way forward, of how, how I'm going to do on Twitter and YouTube, is I'm not dealing with... I'm, I'm not going to get into the conversation of Xbox anymore. It's just not worth it. It really isn't. It it, it, it is what it is. It, now that the eighth gen is closed, right, and we're into the ninth gen of gaming, and eighth gen is a wrap, right? You look back at the eighth generation of gaming. The Xbox console sales isn't that good, right? Their game sales isn't that good, right? Especially when you do the multiplayer comparison. Majority of the multiplats are sold on PlayStation and PC. PC. And now you see these guys don't really beat their games. So what is the point in me just worrying about Xbox? Now, I'm sure when I have my guests, when I do my podcast and I have multiple people, they're going to want to talk Xbox because they like the brand. And of course, I'm not going to shut down the conversation when other people want to bring it up. But as far as for me, I ain't worried about it anymore. It is just, it is what it is. It's a brand that does, it is, it's done for me. There's nothing exciting for me on that one. It's a, it's a brand where it doesn't sell a lot. There's no big game sales. You know what I'm saying? I, the, the games on PC, got it. And you're talking to a community that don't even beat the games. They, they talk more than actually do. They're not doers. You know? So it's going to fall on their fields. It's not going to change. The community will just damage control everything. Like, you can't use any real data with them. They don't accept realistic data. They don't accept facts. They don't accept reality. Even something as simple as what's going on. Even something as they won't even admit that the PlayStation 5, many of the PlayStation 5 versions of Multiplats are running better. They won't even admit that. They won't even go out and say and be honest with themselves. Like, you know what? The Xbox isn't really what the console we actually hyped 10 months. We overhyped it. And as far as PlayStation 5, yeah, let's be honest. We undersold it. 
They won't even give it the props of saying, you know what? Especially for three ninety nine, Sony did real good with the PlayStation Five. It has great, great performance. I mean, hell, it's doing sixty frames with ray tracing. Pretty impressive machine, especially for three ninety nine. Only a hundred bucks more than the Series S. No. They jump and join do cartwheels for the Series S, which literally is not impressive. That console is not impressive at all. No, it's not. Let's be honest. But they're trying their hardest to sell that sucker. They're trying their damnness to make that thing look better than what it is. We all know that thing looks like trash. Let's all be honest. For 99 bucks, you could get a digital PS5, and it's insanely much better. But they won't even do that. So at that point, it's a lost cause. I'm not going to spend the ninth generation with this delusional group. It's just not. It's just not worth it. And they're so delusional. And I, and I look how crazy it is, right? So there's an article of a developer that left Halo Infinite, right? The article obviously is a clickbait article, right? But the article explains that he went to the developers of Darksiders. So I retweeted the article, but I specifically asked about Darksiders. Because Darksiders 3s didn't sell all that good. And I played all of them, except for Genesis, Darksiders Genesis, which I bought it. But I got to catch up to the story with it, right? Um, but I played Darksiders 1, Darksiders 2, and Darksiders 3. I personally like the story. I like the idea of the Four Horsemen. So I was hoping that the game would be successful enough to complete the story, to complete the franchise, to complete the saga. But after the sales or the sales of Darksiders 3 not doing too well, I'm thinking, damn, this is pretty much it. We're never going to get the story, and that's it. But because the article stated this developer, contractor, whoever went to that studio, I just asked, man, are they going to make this game? Because I really would like to see the story just finish off, right? Why are these dudes coming at me like, oh, he's just a contractor, you know, for Halo Infinite. And I'm thinking, I'm not even talking about Halo Infinite at all. Yes, granted, the title of the article is that, but I'm focusing more on Darksiders. I don't really care about Halo Infinite, whatever. I don't really care about the whole, oh my God, the studio's doom. I didn't even do that. My article wasn't about doom and gloom for Halo Infinite. I didn't even mention Microsoft or Halo at all. I didn't care. I didn't care. My art, it wasn't even a bait article like, ha ha, Halo's doom. I don't care. I don't care if Halo Infinite is doom or not. It was whatever. If it comes out, it comes out. If it don't, it don't. I don't care. I asked specifically, do we think that they're going to make a new Darksiders? And I even put... And do still come in Xbox. I don't care. You know? And more and more my combo is going to be more about PC, Nintendo, PlayStation. Less about Xbox. Because I just don't care. It's, it's just it's just not worth it. It really isn't worth it. The console don't sell too well. Dudes don't buy the games. And now we see this. They hardly beat the games. So why, why am I wasting my time for? Right? I think in the end, as you guys are, like I already said, um... Let me set this back uh, a little bit. Like I already said, I'm going with PC as my secondary platform. Right? I'm going to get that PC. And that's it. I'll be fine with that. I'll be fine with PlayStation PC. I'm holding out on the Switch only because of the rumored um, 4K more powerful Switch. Um, uh, so I think that'd be pretty cool, but if it doesn't look like Nintendo is going to do it, then I'll just buy the Switch. Like I said, it's all about the games, right? And, and, and Nintendo has enough games, uh, for me to wet my whistle. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, fuck, I mean, look at Dark Souls Remastered, man. Look at those Dark Souls games. PlayStation, PlayStation games really love Dark Souls, which I don't blame them because we got Demon Souls. That's how it started, so... I would imagine that the the fan base will primarily be on PlayStation, um, especially with Bloodborne. I mean, when you think about it, PlayStation fan base is like in total the Souls fan base because we got it all: Demon Souls, Bloodborne, all the Dark Souls, Neo is is all across the board. So I could imagine why, especially if you're a Souls fan, you would be a PlayStation game, or, or at a minimum, you would have and own a PlayStation. So I can't blame you that. So that's so that's the direction. So my channel, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna get back and get back to the people, um, get some guests up in there. 
because um, like I said, once we do the pocket 60 frames, no lag is is just that everybody has their opinion. It's not a, a, a echo chamber to hype just one product, whatever. Even though it may feel like that, um, and when and when it gets too much like that, you guys know I'm always the guy who will be. Um, the odd man out just to balance it out. But I want to have more guests on there. So we're going to get back to having guests. Going to get Sony Baby up in here. You know what I'm saying? And have fun with that. And, you know, and it, it's, 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 you're not going to see me talk about, um, just, you're not going to see me just drag on Xbox, repeating the same thing over and over. It just doesn't matter. Right now, if there's people spreading misinformation about PC, Switch, PlayStation, I'm going to tackle those topics, and I'm just going to tackle those topics, okay? The way I see it, the Xbox brand is what it is. There's no change in it. The the core community now has established its identity, which is more about Game Pass, not buying games, and just dibble-dabble. That's how I see it, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that because it's a consumer product. And if that's the audience that attracts it, then so be it. It's not the product for me. So I'm personally moving on from that. It's just, I think this was, now that the gen is closed, the generation moved on. That's how I see it. So I'm just not gonna, I'm just not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna spend this new generation doing the same thing as the last generation. I, I think... I think it's it's just it is what it is. I think it's a waste of time. I think you know waste your energy. Um, accept the products for what they are, and not for what you want it to be. You know, of course, people say no, no, you got to be vocal. To a certain point, yes, but I think at this point, in particular, to that brand, it's done. The decision is done of how the brand is. And I think the, the core audience of that brand, of the Xbox brand, made the decision. It's about Game Pass. It's about not buying games or not buying games they won and trying to get everything as cheap as possible. And just it's just there. It's just it's just accessing games. It's not really about the beating games or it's just it's just whatever. It is what it is, right? So that's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm gonna go with. That's what I'm gonna run with. Um, but I definitely wanna get back with the guests and stuff and then get the crew and stuff like that. Um. So that's it. That's it. That's that. That's the show. That's my first live broadcast. I'll see you guys next week. We're gonna get the crew back together. Um, everybody that showed up, I truly appreciate you guys rocking out with me. Uh, and I'll see you guys next week. All right. But on your way out, hit the like button, and we're gonna do our thing. All right. But until then, I'll see you guys next week. Probably double double throughout the week with some little videos or whatever but with that you guys take care be safe and i'll see you guys right and like always i'm your only friend in these youtube feeds all right so you guys take care peace out truly appreciate you guys rocking out with me